Yo yo gaming enthusiasts, Nick here with a review of The Surge. The Surge is the next attempt at the Dark Souls-like formula of animation-dependent third-person melee action that seeks to destroy the player for recklessness from developers Deck 13. Deck 13 was one of the first to chase the Souls-like genre with 2014's Lords of the Fallen, a competent take on Souls mechanics that ultimately missed the mark on aesthetics and combat depth for a Souls veteran like me. The Surge steps into the near future where Earth is dying and exoskeletons bolted to the human frame appear commonplace. Creo, who might as well be Google, is working to repair Earth's atmosphere by launching rockets that do... something. That part I'm still unsure about. The player controls Warren, a disabled man seeking a new life where he can walk again, even if it means doing hard labor in a massive rocket building facility. After many Souls games, and even 2017's other new contender in the genre, Neo, I don't expect much in terms of narrative from these games. Gameplay is king, and The Surge mostly nails it. The premise of mech suits for this type of game was a great call because The Surge brings a new twist to the genre, the ability to target specific body parts on enemies. Like most RPGs, the player can outfit Warren with weapons and armor varying from light to heavy with variation and stat minutia between. But in order to gain new pieces for Warren's arms, legs, torso, or head, the player must choose which ligament to sever from an enemy. This adds a new level of tactics where the player has to decide if they want new armor or if it's best to attack an unarmored limb to take down the enemy more quickly. The Surge even goes one step further with gruesome executions for a successful rending that never got old for me over the course of 30 plus hours. The player will drive Warren through the Creo facility as he tries to determine what exactly caused everyone to die or turn into mechanoid zombies, all the while meeting a few throwaway characters along the way. Defeating enemies will drop Tech Scrap, the Surge's Souls equivalent, that can be used to upgrade Warren's core power or to craft and upgrade weapons and armor. I did not totally love the core power mechanic. It is both Warren's overall level and his encumbrance. Equipping implants, the game's usable items and passive abilities, and armor all add up to the total allowable core power, which at times felt a little too limiting for me. Some implants are injectables, aka consumable items like instant health, stamina, or energy, and the fact I had to devote a limited resource to what is typically a standard item in other RPGs felt like an odd choice. I spent time grinding to level my core power so I could experiment with different implants and armor combos, which personally wasn't a problem but could be tedious for others. And speaking of grinding, the surge can be quite difficult. Every single enemy can pose a threat with many capable of taking the player out in 2-3 hits throughout the entire game, regardless of equipment. I died many, many times, which should come as no surprise for this type of game, but it's actually something I enjoyed. I've played every Souls game numerous times, so much that I got comfortable in every situation with my fear of death and losing progress long gone. The Surge brought back that punishment I apparently crave. While the enemies are tough, where the Surge falters is with its bosses. There's only five in the whole game, which I guess was appropriate for the game's length, but boss battles are a huge factor for me in a Souls-like. The build-up to something truly challenging is an aspect that I feel is key to these games. But the Surge's bosses all felt like missed opportunities. Deck 13 nailed the moment-to-moment -moment combat, but boss battles came down to tedium and time-wasting, as opposed to learning difficult attack patterns. My favorite boss was the final one because it actually felt like somewhat of a struggle. For two of them, they incorporated the whole chop-off-pieces conceit, but for whatever reason, it just didn't feel great to me. Lack of bosses leads me to lack of enemy variety. Again, the game isn't long, and there's only about five to six areas to explore, but it often felt like I was fighting the same enemy, only with slightly different armor. Their attack patterns would differ based on the weapon types they used, which, once you've seen them all, the anxiety of new encounters melts away. That said, the Surge does some interesting remapping of areas with higher tier enemies sprinkled around after key points in the story, an idea I really liked. It gave new life to previously tread ground in surprising ways, which brings up the Surge's level design, a huge aspect of the game that Deck 13 hit out of the park. I was initially concerned with how this game would continue to keep areas visually engaging because futuristic industrial corridors and machinery can only go so far. But instead of trying to constantly change how the game looked, Deck 13 threw in tons, and I mean tons, of shortcuts that consistently gave new meaning to space and player location. The aha moment of finding a new door or service tunnel that brought me back to something I recognized was a feeling that worked perfectly through the entire game. They felt appropriately placed, 
often after making it through a section where I'd be worried about dying and losing my scrap, only to be granted a reward of easy access back to a medbay. The Surge is a great step in the right direction for moving this new genre forward. The combat can feel a little janky, such as getting stuck in a two-hit combo after a single button press, or with unclear invincibility frames when dodging, but overall whacking enemies feels satisfying and rewarding. I could have used a little more flexibility with the core power and weapon variety, but since the game only took me about 30 hours, I'm not sure how much there really could have been anyway. The progression through levels feels tight and focused, with the bosses being the only part where it felt like the game was wasting some of my time. Story-wise, I have truly no idea what happened. Things start to get pretty weird towards the end, and I would have liked to see more. That's a good thing, though. Deck 13 left me wanting, and it appears we may see some DLC in the future. The Surge is absolutely worth a look for fans of this style, and I hope to see whatever comes next use the idea of body parts targeting as a jumping off point. Thank you for watching my review of The Surge. Once again, I'm Nick. Every week I host a podcast called 2v1 Podcast on all services. Every Monday, my buddies and I get together to talk about the games we're playing and the happenings of the industry. You can check us out at 2v1podcast.com. And also you could subscribe to my channel where I do reviews like this every so often and Let's Plays almost every week. Thanks again.